City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So it's still cold outside. I think this morning it was like between six and seven degrees, plus wind chill on top of that. So very cold. So I'm going to be making a flannel shirt. Now I'm using this pattern and I don't believe that it actually calls for flannel. But I have never let that stop me before. It actually calls for Georgette Shally. Okay, it says cotton blends. I'm using 100% flannel. This is flannel, I love flannel. Um, you know, something bright and lively. That's what it is. And I actually might make this shirt a little bit longer because it calls for about three yards. And I have close to four yards. And I'm thinking instead of making it, just having an extra one yard piece laying around, I might make it kind of like tunic length, you know? And then if I want to tuck it in, well, I can just tuck it in and that's fine. I'm going to be making the longer sleeves, the view, I don't want the ruffly type. Um, the one it's actually on the model here, it's a longer sleeve. It looks like an elastic band at the bottom, but I think that I'll be able to just push that up my arms, you know, kind of like this one is just an elastic at the bottom if I need a shorter sleeve, but that way I have the full length if I want it. And hopefully it's going to go together really well. So just like normal, I have pre-washed my 100% cotton flannel in hot water. I have pre-dried it on high heat just to try to get all of the shrink and everything out of it that I can. And uh, so let me go ahead, turn the camera down and get started cutting it out. Now I just opened my pattern and I was looking to see if they listed the finished garment bust width and they don't. The only finished garment measurements they have is the length which isn't helpful. So I opened it up here and usually they'll have more finished garment measurements, but they actually just have the body, the body measurements, the ones that are up here. So that's just duplicated. So I think I'm going to have to look at the little markings on the actual pattern piece to find out how much ease they're working into this to decide which size I'm going to cut out. Cause I want to make sure that I have plenty of room to move around. Okay, so down here on piece number one, where you see the bullseye, that should be where the apex, the widest point of the bust is. Mine's actually lower, but since there's no darts, I'm not gonna worry about it on this blouse. Um, but above that, there'll be the first column of numbers is sizes. The next one is measurements. And I can see for size 16, which I usually do, that they have a measurement of 47 and a half inches. So that's the finished garment width at this point. And that size 16 is for a bust that is 38 inches, okay? So they're giving you at least about 10 inches of ease for this pattern, which is plenty. So I am gonna stick with my size 16. Hopefully the sleeves are wide enough. I'll show you when I get there. And I've got my sleeve piece here cut out and it looks like they are also giving you a lot of ease for the sleeve, very wide, which I love. It's got a little dart up here at the top. So I'm not gonna be making any modifications to the sleeve either, um, because even if it is a touch too long, since it does have an elastic on the bottom of the cuff, I can just push it up. So usually the 
sleeve measurements. The standard sleeve measurement comes pretty close to my actual size, so I don't think that's going to be a problem, but very happy to see that. I want to point out for the sleeve, this piece is really, really wide. So you have to cut out one and then cut out the other. So just make sure, you know, you end up with two different right and left pieces. You know, one with the fabric facing up and one facing down. And my fabric, it's, you know, doesn't really have a particular direction. So I'm placing one on the fabric this way and one that way. That's going to be fine. I'll save a little bit of space that way. But if I had a nap or a fabric that had an image that was definitely directional, well, then you have to lay it out so all the tops go up in the same direction. Okay, so I'm ready to cut out my front and back pieces here. And I have plenty of fabric. And I just put my tape measure up to the base of my neck to figure out how long I want my top. Because I want it longer, you know, kind of tunic length where it's going to come around to like here. And I want a finished length of about 32 inches, so fairly long. And for my size, the finished length is 25, okay? So the difference in there between 32 and 25 is about 7 inches. So that is what I'm going to be adding. And instead of just adding it to the bottom, I want to keep this little curved bottom here. So I'm actually going to be adding it right here where this lengthen and shorten here line is. So let me just make a little note to add seven inches. And um, I'm gonna slice this here, cut the curve at the bottom, and then lay it out. Okay, so this piece, I'm gonna do the uh, front first. It gets laid out on the fold. This is the fold of my fabric. So I'm just going to get the first part over here and pinned in place. And then, you know, I did cut it in half where they have the lengthen and shorten hairline. So what I need to do is put my ruler down to add, you know, about seven inches and then place the bottom part of this pattern down below it, okay? So that I have a gap here of seven inches between the cut line at the top and on the bottom. And then I'll pin this in place and just, you know, continue down here until I can cut all the way around over there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the back. The back is also, yes, the back is also cut on a fold. So it's the same process. Okay, so I've got my front and back cut out. And I want to show you one other thing. This dot right here, just below the curve, is the point where you stop sewing and you leave it open. And that should be at hip level if it was normal size because I extended it. My hip level is up here. Okay, so I am going to right now, before I forget, move the mark for that dot seven inches higher. And I'm just going to put a pin right here for right now. And actually, so that I don't forget what that pin is and everything. I'm going to stick a little piece of tape underneath it and that's going to trigger my memory that no, this is here for a marking reason and not just to hold my fabric together. Okay, so when I do my side seams, that's going to where I'm, where I'm going to stop sewing and leave it open there. So it'll still be easy for me to move around in. Okay, the only things, and I'm going to do that for the this is the back piece. I'm going to do it for the front also because those will match up. And the only other thing I still need to cut out are the facings. There is a front facing that looks like this, a back facing like this that you cut on a fold. I need to cut one of each of those and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to need to go take a break. I don't know if you can see, but I have some very angry little birds over there because their feeder is empty. I'm going to go get some more feed, do some things, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, welcome back. It's actually been a couple days and I want to get started getting this put together. And we're going to be working on the front piece. So before I can actually do the little stay stitching and everything that they want, I need to transfer over some markings. So like usual, when there's a circle, uh, what I do is I have my thick piece of leather that I put under the tissue paper 
and uh, I need to punch out the circle for my size which is 16. Looks like over here I've got a smaller one, a larger one, down here at the bottom I have one. So that's how I punch it out. Um, I actually need to flip my fabric over so I am drawing on the wrong side of my fabric. So let me do that. As far as notches, when I go to clip them, I just clip into my fabric. You know, it's not very deep. It's somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. And I think those scissors need a bit of sharpening. So let me come back in here. Okay, so my little notches, they're not deep. That'll be just fine. Let me go ahead, flip my fabric so it is wrong side out so I can get my little dots transferred over. And when I do that, I just reach through the little circle I just punched out with my heat erasable pen and just draw it straight onto my fabric. Okay, so now that I have these dots transferred over, um, we're going to need to do some reinforcement stitching down here at the bottom. So if I put my ruler, so at five eighths of an inch is at the cutting line here, that's going to line up between the dots. So we know we're dealing with a five eighths inch seam allowance there. And if I connect the dots here, that is also five eighths of an inch, you know, or so. Cutting line's not actually perfect there. But I'm just going to line my ruler up between these two dots and draw that line also. On the instructions, they say only to do the reinforcement stitching just right like an inch above this dot down over and up but to me as long as I am over at the machine stitching I'm going to go ahead and do it the entire way just to keep this you know nice and set I'll use some kind of a thread that's matching something here I haven't decided which color yet now um, this is 100% cotton flannel so it will fray so I am going to be uh, using my serger just to serge all around the raw edges here, but I'm going to be doing my stay stitching first. Now the other dot that I need to transfer over, if you remember, I extended my bottom piece by seven inches. So if I lay this piece down here, and this is the little circle for that opening down there and I'm just going to measure up seven inches and draw its little corresponding dot here. And this is the point where I'm going to be leaving it open below there. Uh, but I need to draw that same dot seven inches up on both sides of both my front and my back so I can't forget that. So let me go to my machine and with a stay stitch, I mean not stay stitch, well yes I guess it is, a straight stitch come down over and up, making sure I pivot right at these corners and then serge all the way around the piece. Okay, so I actually only serged the little shoulder piece and then around because this and this is gonna be encased in that facing, that front facing. But what I still need to do is come back here in between these two dots on each of my front sides, I need to run two rows of gathering stitches you know, one about a quarter inch, one about an eighth of an inch beyond that, between those two rows on both sides. Okay, so there's my gathering stitches in. I just need to set this aside for a minute and get my back piece out because we're going to do very similar things to it. I just wanted to show you it's very snowy and cold outside today. That up there is my workshop for my sewing machines. And I don't feel like hiking up that hill today and I have paint that's drying up there, so... I am just going to hibernate the rest of the day. But yep, yeah, that's the view outside of the window. All right, so this is my back piece. Now there's two dots up here that I need to put gathering stitches between, just like the front, you know, two of them, quarter inch and eighth of an inch in from there. I went ahead and marked where my center back is just because that's going to come in handy when I'm placing my facing on. And... I did bring that dot up down here. So I'm going to run my two gathering stitches up here and then from this point, which is like the little shoulder-ish part or even that doesn't actually matter because that's going to be in the seam allowance. So from this point here, this is the arm area from here down all the way around and back up to this point, I'm going to be serging the edges. 
Okay, so now that I have that done, you know, gathering stitches and serging here, I need to join my fronts to my backs at the side seams. So I'm just going to put my fronts down here on top of it. And there is a notch on the side seam that would be a good idea to match up along with this very top here. Now remember this dot, I'm going to match up that that dot on the front and the back, which looks good here. And I'm only going to be sewing from here to this dot at 5 8 of an inch on both sides and then pressing the seam allowances open. Okay, so the instructions want us to go forward and start putting the sleeves on, but since I'm down here and I've got it started to be pressed up, I think I'm just going to go ahead and hem my bottom just get that out of the way because it's always kind of anticlimactic when you get to the very end of your project then you still have to hem it you know so because there's these curves hemming a curve can be a little bit tricky so the way we're going to work that ease in is like at this point up here where it's still straight at this point here where it's still straight I'm going to put a couple little marks okay and between these two points I'm going to run a row of straight stitching at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, just here on this corner and uh, this is the back and I'll do the same thing to the front. Just those four corners, quarter inch seam allowance and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got that little quarter inch stitching in and I'm just going to trim the tails off. I don't need that right now. Um, what I need to do is basically press it up about five eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'll show you one corner and then everything else will be about the same. And there's going to come a point where it's really hard to keep this flat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come on the bottom at this point, fold it up again about five eighths of an inch so that that stitching I did right here is right about in the middle, okay, of this piece that I have folded up here. All right, so I've got it right here to right here. Now the very center, I'm also going to fold up and bring my pins over here. Just stick a little pin in the middle here and right here. And you can see that it's going to be kind of buckled up in the middle where that little gap is, okay? So let me pin this just quickly and over here. So I, this is gonna be a narrow hem. So basically once I have it up 5 eighths, I'm just tucking that little edge under. Let's see if I can get you in a little closer here, okay? So I've just tucked that under and gonna pin it in place. And when I do stitch it, I'm gonna machine stitch it, okay? So I'll just be doing an edge stitch. So let's say I have over here also, it's all tucked in nice and neatly. So I've got all of this bumpiness right here. That's where this little line of stitching is gonna come into play. So if where this pin is, I go ahead and fold it under, okay? Where this extra is, I'm going to get a pin and right in the middle of that, I'm just going to stick my pin in one of these threads. Let's see if I can get you in there. I'm just hooking it into one of those threads, giving it a little tug, which is going to slightly gather those little stitches in there. And it's going to be enough to keep this part laying nice and flat. Okay, so I'm going to put a pin here. And let's do the same thing right here where I'm just gonna tuck this under, all right? And where all of this bulkiness is right there where it doesn't wanna lay flat, grab a pin, stick it underneath one of those straight stitches, give it a tug, and you see how it's cinching it all in there? And then I can just lay it down flat and put my pin in. And I will be pressing this before I stitch it. So when I go back to stitch it around this edge, it's gonna lay nice and flat. But that's gonna give us a nice little hem. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other three corners. And once they're all pinned on, then I'll just come back and edge stitch all the way along 
when I get up here where it all joins together okay when I get up here where it all joins together so imagine if you will that this is all turned under nicely here I'm just going to come up go straight across and then come back down on that side okay so down here I just wanted to show you when I'm edge stitching it I'm just using the inside of this toe over here as my guide and I'm just going to run that along the edge here if there's any little loops of thread from where I cinched it in before I'll just trim those later it's no big deal and just let it follow all the way around and that's going to give a really nice little edge stitch right there okay so I've got that hem done over there and I need to get started with this sleeve and remember I am doing the long sleeve like this model here that has an elastic at the very bottom so my sleeve is full length they have cutting lines for the shorter options these little dots are for I believe this option with the ties I'm not dealing with any of that right now but what I do need to mark is this up here where this dart is going to be okay so let me go ahead and like normal punch these um, out and I'm going to be marking it on the wrong side of my fabric Okay, so I've got my little dots drawn on there and I am going to draw the line to connect them. Makes my life easier, helps me see the stitching line a lot better and all of that stuff. So I'll do that to both of them. And then up here at the top, I'm gonna put my little pin down the first dot, back up its corresponding dot over here push that through this flannel is very cozy it wants to kind of stick to each other you know stick to itself I should say so I've got these two going straight through and then I'm just going to pinch the bottom intersection point here and that should give me the folding crease I gotta tell you it's looking like this center dot is not symmetrically placed you know there's something off about that and I can kind of smoosh it together um, but you know I think what I'm going to be doing is just making the top ones match the bottom ones match and then at the middle I'll just make sure that my traced line is matching up and I think that we're going to be fine so if you also have trouble getting those center dots to match up I mean you can always make them match up and then just ease in whatever differences there is on on either other side but I don't see the point in that so what I'm talking about is if I stick my pin in straight here on that line you see how it's like over a quarter inch lower that just seems like a marking problem to me so I'm not going to worry about it we'll just make it work and stitch on my traced line okay so once this was put in you press it so that it's going towards the back and put the letter B on my back side um, you'll know the back because the back has two notches on it the front only has one notch on it okay so you press this start towards the back now that that is pressed I'm going to go ahead and serge all the way around these sleeve pieces um, serging this in place over there so it's just one shot over it for both of my sleeves and I'll be right back okay and am move some of this stuff out of the way here got my elastic quarter inch elastic ready and what I need to do is sew the side seams of these sleeves together so just gonna fold it here we go right sides together this is my top up here I'm gonna match it up there is a notch midway to match up here sew this at 5 8 of an inch and then press the seam allowances open okay while I'm over here pressing the seam allowance open I went ahead and turned up the bottom edge so the instructions want you to turn it up 5 8 7 inch and then tuck the edge under and stitch it for a casing I'm making mine a little bit wider um, I'm using a quarter inch elastic and if I only have a quarter inch casing um, it's going to be really tight so I'm folding this up honestly in some places it's 
probably closer to three quarter inch right here. It looks closer to one inch. It's a flannel shirt. I don't think that it makes that much difference, but I've pressed it up once and I'm going to go ahead and turn it under again. But what I wanted to show you is um, before I turn this up, I have fused the bottom parts of my seam allowance down with some stitch witchery. Let me do this one really quick so I can show you. Just because if I'm trying to feed some elastic through a casing, the last thing I really want to worry about is my seam allowances getting stuck, you know? That's never fun. So I just have a little piece, you know? I'm going to put a couple inches of it under each side. Just stick it here. Open this up. Stick some there and fuse it down and that's going to let those seam allowances behave a whole lot better uh, while I'm trying to work that elastic through. So those are handled. I'm going to go ahead and turn up my raw edges like this. Press it like that. Turn it under again and then I'll be ready to edge stitch it to put in my casing. Um, when I do that it's going to be just like I did when I'm doing the hem where I use the side of my little presser foot toe as my guide and I just make a little edge stitch all the way around. I do have a little specialty foot which is great for that too but you know today I just don't feel like getting it out and putting it on my machine so honestly the little toe method works just fine. All right so I got that done and I left my opening right here in the middle you know so that's where I'm going to feed my elastic through. And in the pattern, at this piece number six is the elastic guide for view C, which is the view I'm doing. So I'm just going to line up my elastic between the little marks for my size. And that's where I'm going to be cutting it and uh, get my bodkin so I can feed it through my casing. Okay, so this is my bodkin. You know, I just love using them. They make threading elastic through a whole lot easier than like the safety pin method and stuff, at least for me, you know. You find what works for you. This is what works for me. So I'm going to feed it through. And before this disappears entirely, I am just going to pin it here to my seam allowance. So I have plenty uh, to be able to connect my ends and you can see this is going to be a whole lot of fabric to cinch in on that little piece of elastic but it'll be nice and poofy and sometimes you just like having a poofy elastic sleeve cuff kind of thing here. So now I've got it coming back out and since this is just quarter inch elastic it's pretty lightweight I am just going to overlap them like this with the needle and thread, I'm just going to hand stitch it to connect the two and then let it pop back into the casing when I stretch it out. Okay, so I just kind of, you know, stitch the edges together. Not the neatest thing in the world, but it's going to work. And now I can just pop it in. Okay, so I'll take just a couple stitches, close that little area up, and then my bottom part of my sleeve will be finished. Just slip my arm through. It's not super tight around my wrist, but I think if I pull it up, you know, it'll be great for a three quarter length if I need it. So I think that is good. All right, so we're gonna sew these sleeves into the armhole. So I'm making my bodice part inside out. And this is the back over here. This is the front, you know, it's got that opening on it. And my sleeves I have right side out and I need to match them up. So if this is the back, I'm going to put the side, my letter B for back, over here. So this is my back. This is my back. I'm going to open this up, match up the center seam here, and make sure that I pin it with both of these seam allowances open so that they will stay nice and flat while I'm stitching it together. Okay, and I need to match up the tops up here. Okay, there is a notch down here that should get matched up the sleeve to the top. 
So this is going to lay nice and flat here. The same for the back. There is an, also a notch on the back. This is going to get matched up nicely. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do after I get it pinned, obviously, is sew it at 5 eighths of an inch. Then I'm going to come back and do it one more time at about a half inch seam allowance. So just inside about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to end up with two rows of stitching uh, from the top all the way to the back for both of my sleeves. Okay, so in the instructions, what they want you to do is for this whole length, trim it close to the second row of stitching. Actually, I'm going to get my pinking shears out instead. And I'm just going to trim down here at the very bottom where that curve is. I don't I don't really feel like I need to trim the upper part because that upper part is going to be stitched over oop, thickness here. The upper part is going to be pressed towards the bodice. Okay. So like down here, I have it trimmed out with pinking shears. Give me lots of flex flexibility and everything. It should be comfortable. But up here at the top, so like this is my sleeve here and this is my bodice back. This seam allowance is going to get pressed towards the bodice this way. And over here, which is bodice front sleeve, this seam allowance goes towards the front. Okay. Okay, so I'm almost done getting these seam allowances pressed over. So this is a sleeve here. I'm just pressing it all the way over here towards the back. And I'm not going to worry about pressing the entire sleeve, but at least the top like five or six inches, getting that going the right way is going to really help up here when I'm connecting the facing to it. Okay, so here it is. It's, it's huge. It's very, very full. You know, lots of ease worked in and I made it extra long. So I just held it up to myself and it's like a big nightshirt at this point, which you never know. I might end up wearing it for something like that. Um, but I have my front facing here and my back facing here and I need to cut out some interfacing and get that fused on to both of these. Once I have the interfacing fused on then I'll go ahead and transfer over all my markings but you know I do it now they'll just all disappear and I am using my usual very lightweight interfacing you know it's going to do the job of keeping the threads, you know, nice and square. Okay, so I wanted to show you, I'm feeling a bit lazy right now as far as cutting out all of my interfacing ahead of time. So I'm gonna show you my feeling lazy alternative method, which is, this is a Teflon sheet. You know, it's actually made for cooking, I think, but they're handy to have in here. And I'm putting my little piece on wrong side up. And I'm just going to place my interfacing over it. Find a nice little spot here and get started fusing it on. The Teflon's going to keep the uh, interfacing from fusing to the board there. So it's not on super, super good at this point, but it's enough I can move it around. Okay, so got my, my little back piece and I'm also going to put it wrong side up and actually see how wrinkled that is. I'm going to give it a quick little press just to get those wrinkles out. Okay, with that done, now I'm going to place my interfacing so it's over that and get it pressed in place. All right, so now it is fused on enough, and I can just peel it off. Then I can come back with my scissors and just trim around it. And it's gonna be nice and easy. Once I trim my interfacing around it, then I'll come back on the right side and press it again, just to make sure it's fused on really well. Okay, so starting with this back facing piece, the triangle marks the shoulder seam, okay? But that triangle is also 5 8 7 inch in from each side. So if I mark it right now, um, I just need to be aware that basically at the corner of the shoulder seam is where that triangle is. 
So in my opinion, it's not totally necessary to mark it on, but it can't hurt if you want to. This one down here, this dot is going to match up with a dot that we already put onto uh, our front fabric. So that's important there. I mean our back. Sorry, our back fabric. And then this marks the center back. So I'm going to go ahead and get these transferred over. Now, I ironed this, you know, as you saw. And sometimes, I haven't checked yet, but sometimes when you iron things, they stretch. So if I put this here, is it big? Yeah, that's a little big, right? So tell you what, I'm going to fold this in half and put my little piece on top of it with the fold line here. And it looks like it's grown at least an eighth of an inch on the side over here. And so I'm just going to come back and trim that off with the totally wrong scissors, but you know what, that's going to work. Okay, so now I'll remark it based on these measurements here, but I am going to go ahead and mark with kind of a dotted line coming down the center back like that. All right, because that's going to come in handy when I'm matching it up. So for the front, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and actually fold it in half first. All right and just put that up here with this center line along my fold just to see if I'm still about the same size. And it looks like I am slightly wider, but that doesn't make any difference. Everything else seems to be lining up right, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and also punch out this back, tr the triangles up here, which mark the shoulder seam. Okay, but in addition to that, we have a circle here, a big circle here. Okay, now it says for view A, they have these smaller ones. And it looks like view A has a little, I don't know if you can see, little laces going up there. You could probably do that on any of them if you feel like you need to put little laces, you know, with grommets or something going up the front be my guest. I am not going to, so I'm going to be skipping these two little dots on each side, but these bottom corner ones I need. So I'm going to punch those out as well and go ahead and transfer over all of these little circles, so many of them, um, onto my back side, my interfaced side of my front facing. Okay, so we're going to need to do some reinforcement stitching. And what they're saying is to connect these two dots, okay, and then coming straight down, I'm hoping at 5 8 7 inch, looks right, coming down this way from the larger dot or the one in the middle here. Okay, so I'm lining that with 5 8 of an inch and drawing down an inch or so. So I've got this little corner here. And what they're saying is, here it is, up here at the top, to reinforce stitch it. So I'm going to come over, pivot, and then go down. But I want to make sure that I follow this stitching line pretty precisely. All right, so now that that is done, like if you can see my stitches there, oh, sorry, my camera's rocking, I need to clip diagonally up to that stitching line, okay? so it'll open up that way. I need to do that on both sides. I just realized that um, I completely spaced that I'm supposed to cut two of these out. I don't know why I did that. I know it. I know I'm supposed to, but anyway, aside from the camera, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and cut out another back piece and a front piece. So you should have two fronts, two backs. Basically everything I did here, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut another one out. I will be doing this little stitching mark and clip up to it, but I won't be interfacing it. Okay, so let me get that and I will be back later. Okay, I got my facings cut out of the uh, fabric. So in addition to all the other marks that I have on both of these, I'm also drawing the center line. So as you can see, I just put a little mark at the top, put a mark at the bottom, 
and then I'll just come back here with my ruler and connect those because having that center mark on there I think is going to be really handy. Okay, so in the instructions, they are calling the ones with the interfacing on the inside facing, okay? So the ones that do not have interfacing on um, are going to be the visible ones from the outside of the garment. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is taking my non-interfaced front facing, my non-interfaced back facing, matching it up, up here at the shoulder seams, sewing it at 5 8 of an inch, and then pressing those seam allowances open. Okay, so we're going to start matching up the little facing here with the neckband. Before I do that, down here at the very front, a long time ago, remember we did this little stay stitching? Well, you can probably see it this side better, around these corners. I need to clip up to, but not through, that stitching line because I'm going to have to open all of these up while I'm putting my little band on, okay? So I got that opened up down there at the bottom. Okay, so here is the neck opening of my top. And this, let's just put it on here just for illustration's sake. Um, it's going to be sitting above it, okay? It might be easier if you just leave it laid kind of like that to start with, okay? And I'm kind of rotating it so I can get to the shoulder over here first. So if I know this is going to be joined up here, okay, that's going to make it easy for me to get started by just flipping it over. I'm matching up this dart seam in the sleeve to the shoulder seam here at about 5 8 of an inch in. I'm going to stick this pin and I'm going to stick it in at that dart and line up the edges here. This dot right there, that should match up with this dot right here, okay, which is just before this downward area. So I'm going to get a pin in that dot and match it up over here. Okay. Now, with that being said, if I'm going to have to open up, and this is my facing here, okay? I'm opening it up almost 90 degrees so I can get this side also lay against that cut edge. So it's opening up like that. All right. So I'm just going to get another pin and place it here. Ah, uh, this is kind of a persnickety type thing. Tell you what, we're just going to gather as we go. I think that that will work. So up here at the top, this is my shoulder. There's no gathering stitches where the sleeve is. So I'm just going to pin that flat right here with the seam allowances going towards the bodice. Okay, so now I have these gathering threads here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the two on the inside here. Get my little pin and pull them up separate. Give them a little tug to work in these gathers here. Okay, it's not exactly even, but it's enough that I can get the idea. All right, I will adjust those in a minute. So now I'm coming around the back. And again, where the sleeve is, there are no gathers. The seam allowance for this sleeve is going towards the bodice back. Placing a pin here. Okay, let me turn this around again. This wants to get all flipped about, so let me get her flipped out. Okay, now I have another dot. This is my back facing. Okay, here's my center back. Here's a dot right there. If I look at the back side here, 
this dot should line up to where these gathering stitches are starting. And uh, I'm just going to put those two on the inside. And it does match up very well, so that's good. So I'm going to stick a little pin here. Okay, now I'm going to skip around. Remember I put a mark here where the center back of my blouse is. This wants to keep flipping around on me here. <clears throat> All right, so where this fold is, I'm going to match that up to my center back right here. Okay, so that is center back to center back. I'm going to have to pull these little threads in to get that ease worked in. Okay, and again, I will adjust it later, but that just gives me an idea. Keep coming around and the next landmark is the next dot here on the facing, which again is going to line up to where these gathering stitches stopped. So I'm going to move it over here, pin that in place. Okay, so here's my dot, there's my stitches ending, get that pinned in place and give a little tug to these gathering stitches again just to get the idea of how much we're dealing with okay and then i'm going to move on to the next landmark so i have this little flat part between the last part of the back to the sleeve the seam allowances between the back and the sleeve are going towards the back. And I'm just going to pin that to the facing with the back seam allowance going towards the back. Okay, so the next thing is this shoulder seam on this facing, We're kind of working it around here, and that's matching up with that dart in the middle of the sleeve, which is right here. Okay. So I have that pinned now, and let's see how this stuff works out next to it. Well, that's going to fit really nicely there. And again, look, see, it looks like it's too big here, but that's not the point. The point is at 5 eighths of an inch in. At that 5 eighths point, it's nice and smooth. So not worrying about this, I'm worrying about down here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick another pin in there. Wrapping back around to the other side front. You know what? I think this would have been easier if my blouse was inside out. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck it in right now. If you're doing this, make your blouse inside out to start with, you know? Okay. So now I'm coming back around to the other side front. This is my front, this is my sleeve. The seam allowance goes towards the front, okay? And I'm gonna pin it in place right there. The next landmark is this little dot on my front facing, which matches up to where my gathering stitches are starting on the front. Got all kinds of threads everywhere here, just tucking them out of the way. This is matching up very well, thankfully. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to this dot right here. Stick a pin through that dot. Come way over here. This is that front opening edge here. And there's a dot, and it's set in a lot farther than you would think, but it's correct, okay? So I'm going to stick my pin through this dot on the back, matching up the cut edge here, right there, okay, tucking in my pin, and then that's going to show me how much I need to gather this in. So let me give a quick tug here also. Okay. So there's a quick little tug there. All right, let me shake this out for a second and then we'll work on the front. Okay, so now coming down the front of my little facing piece, there are two dots down here in the corner. That's what I'm working with. I'm going to put a pin down this dot, 
Okay, now it's going to match up to this corner right here. So, right there. My pin is going to come back up. Okay, and I want to make this cut edge here match up like so. So I'm going to go ahead and stick a few pins here just to hold it in place. You know, over pinning is my motto, it seems like. Okay, coming around the bottom, I'm actually going to do this bottom part last. I want to do this side here next. So remember we did this one? Well, this has to open up so that the cut edge coming down lines up with the cut edge on your blouse. So it's going to be an opening like this up here in this corner. Okay, you really want to make sure that this dot here, I'm going to stick a little pin through it, this dot here, the one closest, this is on your blouse, is going to match up to, come on, this dot here where that stitching corner is, all right? So I got that pin in there holding it securely while I get this side matched up. I'm going to go ahead and stick a pin here and I'm going to anchor this little point in place. Okay, I do have a fold there. I'll deal with that as I'm stitching it. Hello, Minna. Okay, so again, coming down this corner, down here at the very bottom, I'm going to put my pin just outside my stitching line in that dot and it needs to come up in this dot. Okay? I know this is very picky. And then anchor it in, come over here, and anchor it in. Alright, the very last thing is the very, very bottom here. And you should be able to just match up the cut edge of your blouse to the cut edge of the little facing here and you are going to have a big opening at the bottom. So I just tuck that in. Okay, everything is pinned. Now here's the thing. If you're not going to feel comfortable just throwing this on a machine and going around because you got all kinds of crazy angles, I would highly suggest hand basting this in place first. It's not going to take that much time and it'll save your sanity later. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me go get a needle and thread, um, you know, something. Just grab, I have a uh, quilting thread here. I'm just gonna grab one of these and basically trace along where my stitching line is gonna be at that five, eight, seven inch in. So say for example, I'm gonna start down here at the bottom, you know, just because I can. And I'm going to start where this corner is, sticking my needle into that corner right there, making sure everything is lined up. And I'm actually just a fraction inside the stitching line. That's okay. That doesn't bother me at all. Okay. As I get a piece done, I'll just be able to pull those pins out so and eventually as I work my way around I'm going to have the whole thing basted on. At that point I can double check and make sure that everything is laying flat or as it should and if not well it's a lot easier to make an adjustment um, when everything is hand basted than when it's machine stitched. So you can see right here I'm able to just kind of push that corner out to where it needs to be with my needle get it in the corner here and I'm actually going to take a little back stitch in that corner just to secure it a little more because there's a lot of tension right there and then I can open it up this way and head this direction okay and um, there's a lot of corners take your time make sure the corners are looking right on both sides and I will be back once I have all this basted on 
Um, when I am getting to the point where all my gathers are, I'm just taking the farther point of my gathers, tying them in a knot, which I've already tied right there, and tying my bobbins and my needle threads together to make a knot. Clip that off because too many gathering stitches makes life complicated. And then I can just go ahead at this point, get everything adjusted so it's nice and even. Put a pin, you know, wherever you need to, to hold it so it's gathered the way you want it to. And then hand baste over all of those gathers also. Okay, so I've got that done. Again, highly recommend that you baste around it. I think I started out saying I was going to make my stitches about a quarter inch. Well, they got a little bit smaller in places just when you're working so much stuff in, you know? Um, now, if your basting stitches show after you have stitched it by machine, it's not that difficult to go ahead and pull them out. So, you know, don't be afraid to put them anywhere you think you need to be able to keep all of your places in, in place. Um, so I need to go over to my machine and start sewing. What I'm going to be doing is looking at my facing side. That way I can be very aware of how my corners are looking as I'm sewing. So, um, how am I going to do this? I think, you know what, I'm going to start about halfway. This is my long front. I'm going to start about halfway here, go up, around, and then back down about halfway. Probably stop at that point flip it over and do the bottom part looking at this side just again to make sure I get these corners right. Okay so I'm over here at my machine and I've just come down that beginning half of the front opening and I'm at this corner and I wanted to show you I'm going up to the point where that dot is and I'm at that point now. I'm going to lift up my presser foot with my needle down and then there's going to be this little fold over here with my presser foot up but needle down. I'm going to move that fold over out of the way and get these threads out of the way here. And then I can continue up very slowly, making sure everything is good. Lift it up again, turn my entire project, put it back down with my edge at 5 8 7 inch and now I'll be able to continue around, okay? Now I'm not, my gathers are underneath here, but since I basted them correctly spaced, that should be okay. And just kind of work myself around. And when I get back to that point on the other side of the front, I'll show you that again. Okay, so here I am coming back to this corner here. So it's getting closer, closer, closer. See, I've got my big fold over here kind of pulling it over out of the way and I am right up to my dot right there okay needle is down okay needle is down presser foot is up I'm turning this flap the opposite way put my presser back down take a couple stitches and now I should be able to lift it Sorry, I know I'm bumping everything, trying to get it to show here. At this point, I should be able to come straight down. Now, I'm only going to go about halfway down this center front. I'm going to call that good. Back it up a hair. Pull this out, and then I'm going to flip it over and sew the other side. Okay, so I just flipped it over. This is where I stopped before. Okay. I'm just going to line that up under my presser foot so I'm overlapping it by about half an inch. And I am watching very carefully this corner down here. Okay, so I want to get up to where this dot is down here, which is one more stitch right there. With the needle down, lifting the presser foot, moving all of this thick stuff out of the way and rotating everything and then putting it back down and I am continuing across the bottom you know lining up at 5 8 or so over here if it's just a little bit one way or the other that's not going to matter 
Got a big knot right here for my basting thread. Okay, so coming to this corner, I need to pull my little fold all the way over so I have a clear shot to where my dot is. One more right there. Needle is down, presser foot is up. Almost, guys, almost. And rotating this, making sure I only have the layers under my presser foot that I want. And then I'm gonna come back up and match up to where I need to be up here. Okay, now look at this where I was sewing before because I couldn't see this stay stitching line. I was in a little bit, so I'm just going to go over that. It's going to be slightly more than 5 eighths of an inch, but that's okay. All right. So that should be it. Let me go ahead and flip this right side out. We can see if there are any problems that I need to fix. Okay, so this is the back. Just double checking. It looks like I've got some gathering threads peeking through, so I'm just going to clip those guys off. Uh, but that looks okay. Now front is going to be the difficult part. Let's take a peek at that. Um, again, I've got a little bit of a gathering thread here. I can see a couple hints of my basting thread in the corner. But honestly, this fabric is so busy, it blends. I'm not going to worry about that. Just clipping off my gathering threads. All right. Now, let's take a good look at these corners down here. Okay, so I got you extreme close-up down here in the corners. I have not pressed this or anything, but you can see it's laying nice and flat. Um, if you really squint, you can kind of see a, one of my basting threads right there. I'm not going to worry about it. But I think that the basting did its job so that all of this is laying nice and flat. Now this is going to be split open, but right now all I'm doing is making sure these corners are good, my gathers are good, and everything like that. So I think we're ready to move forward. So now I need to work on the interfaced one. Um, I'm just going to put them together, stitch the top, shoulder seams at 5 eighths of an inch and press them open on both sides. Okay, so I've got that done and what they want you to do next is press up the edges at 5 eighths of an inch all the way around. Um, the dots are in at 5 eighths of an inch. You're going to be folding it, you know, from the outside to the inside. If you don't think that you know exactly what 5 eighths of an inch is, you might want to draw it in. My usual cheat sheet is to get a piece of measuring tape. I have one that, you know, I think a cat chewed up years ago, so I've just been taking pieces off of it. But in general, these uh, sewing tapes are 5 eighths of an inch wide. So I could just really quickly run around the edge and draw a line where that fold line is so that when I come to press it, I can get it at the exact spot, okay? Once you have it pressed, they say to come back and trim it. To take the fullness out, they say to trim it to 3 eighths. I am just gonna use my pinking shears and come back and take about half of the width out, okay? I think that that's gonna work for me. So once it's all pressed in, trim it like that. And that is the next step. Actually, I have it marked, you know, but before I fold it and then trim it, I think it's gonna be easier just to trim about halfway up after I have it marked. A lot less to press in that way, okay? So you do you, figure out what works best for you, what's easier for you. This is just the way that I'm doing it. Okay, so I have it all pressed in here and I need to make a couple more marks on this. We're going to be marking this center front stitch line. So I'm cutting out the circle at the bottom, but I'm also gonna be cutting out up here where these two corners are, okay, where the stitching line corners are. It's gonna give me a good place to look. So if I'm matching up the center line that I already drew 
previously and get this centered. I can see my center line all the way down. So I have that in place. I'm just going to draw this dot down here and these two up here. These are at 5 8 7 inch in from the edge. Okay. So I can use my little tape here just to you know, get a little idea of where those are going to go. That's going to go straight around. But I needed to connect these two dots up here to this one because this is going to be the opening for my neckline. And I would assume if you're not comfortable with it being this length and you want it shorter that you could probably, you know, just raise that an inch or so and, and then draw it. I'm assuming I haven't actually done it. I'm not sure how it would look on the final, but I'm assuming that it would just be closed up a little bit more. You know, if that's your comfort zone, that might work for you. So now that that is marked, I need to place it on top of this one. So I have my blouse right side out here. And I'm going to overlap my facing on top. So I need to see where my center of this uh, uninterfaced facing pieces and match that up with the center that I just drew which is right here okay I'm going to go ahead and pin that center point up at the top and then come down here to the bottom and where the fold edge is should line up with where the stitching line is okay so I've got that in place. I'm just going to come down here and pin it in place down here. Okay. And I think I'm going to put one in the middle also just to hold that in place. So I also need to, of course, pin it at the shoulders, at the center back and get it all ready for stitching. Okay, so again, my battery died. My camera, it won't tell me when the battery is dying until I'm done with the segment. And then I look up and it says battery exhausted. So I never know exactly when it's ending. But I just wanted to show you that I'm pinning uh, my shoulder seams. I'm pinning both sides so that when I stitch this, I can make sure that my seam allowances are gonna stay open and nice and flat. Okay, so here is my front. I'm going to put a pin here about halfway around the front, pin the back, and then I will stitch it all the way around at 5 8 of an inch. Okay, but when I come to this point, I will rotate, come down. At the very bottom, instead of just pivoting and coming back up, what works better for me is if I go down and then do a stitch horizontally and then come back up. Okay, so going down over a stitch and then back up and then here I can just pivot and go all the way around. Okay. Okay, so I've got it stitched on and what I need to do now is come in here and cut out this triangle and I'm cutting it at like a fat eighth of an inch. Get down to the bottom and remember I said go straight across one stitch if you can see it down there. I do that because it's a lot easier to cut up to that stitch when you have one going straight across. Okay, and then up here I'm going to trim that out a little bit. So I have a little triangle I'm cutting out. And then we are going to be under stitching this. So I'm going to take my pinking shears again and just trim off about half of this seam allowance so that it's going to flex a lot more um, around the whole neckline and then it'll be a lot easier to get that understitching in. Okay, so that is done. So for understitching, what that is going to mean, and I don't think I'm going to worry too much about the very front. It's more the neckline that I'm going to be dealing with up here. You're not going to be able to get it all the way into the corner. Just don't even worry about that. So starting up here on this side, I'm going to open it up and I'm laying the seam allowances underneath 
the facing, okay, underneath the interfaced side. So that when I come back, I can put a row of straight stitches over here. We'll be on the inside, the private side, okay, this side here. A row of straight stitches just inside this seam and it's going to go through all of these layers here, okay? And I'm going to start, oh, probably about an inch or so from this corner. That's about as close as I'm going to get comfortably and go all the way around and I'll be ending up about an inch or so from this corner, I think. Right about there is about how close I can comfortably get over here without stretching things out of shape. Okay, so I've got it under my presser foot here and just I'm feeling it as I go to make sure all of these seam allowances are under this side. Just using the inside of this toe for my seam guide and just slowly working my way around one just a couple inches at a time. Just like that, okay? Okay, so I've got my understitching in. If you can see, it's just that little row of stitching there. I need to go ahead and press it now. And I'm over at my ironing board, just gonna slowly get all of this turned out. I need to get my little chopstick, which is still downstairs. Oh my gosh, so I got my knitting needle instead to pop out this little corner here. Okay. And I need to get some pins over here. Basically, all of these seam allowances are going to need to get tucked in and underneath the facing, okay? So let me grab some pins. And I'm going to try to hit these corners first. I think that if I can get the landmark corners pinned in first, then everything else will kind of fall into place. So like down here at the bottom, I've got a lot of stuff to fold up in there. I'm actually going to come and trim out this little bit here from my blouse. There. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side just to get some of that bulk out because I only have so much space underneath this little facing, okay? So here is the inside of my blouse and I'm going to tuck this facing with the inner facing on. Match up these corners down here. Get my hand in here and get these corners pinned, okay? So just kind of like that, once I get all of the corners, the shoulder seam, the center back pinned, then I'll come back and make sure everything else is lining up. Um, I, I guess I could machine stitch this on the outside. This would actually, you know, kind of be a pretty blouse to do embroidery stitches on, but my fabric's so busy. I don't think that'll work, but if this was a solid, you could do really pretty embroidery stuff around this band, just saying. I'm probably just gonna whip stitch this down on the inside. I think that that's gonna be easy enough. It's not a huge long piece, so that should be fine. So like on this corner, I'm gonna flip it right side out, get my corner of my little facing poked out, and get the inside corner to match up like so. So let me go ahead and get all of this pinned together with the edge of my facing matching up with the stitching line underneath here and a needle and thread matching thread whip stitch it all down all the way around. I wanted to show you I'm almost done whip stitching this down. If at all possible, try to make it so that you can just pick up a thread right around where your stitching is underneath and then come up. Um, that's going to be the most invisible, strongest way to, to whip stitch this down. You know, if you can't, you can't. And if your fabric is a very busy, thick, busy one, like, you know, this flannel is, even if you have to stitch out here somewhere, it's not going to really show you're using a matching thread. But um, I wanted to try this on because it looks so cozy. It's 11 degrees outside. What time is it now? It's noon. 
it's noon. It's been warming up since this morning and it's only up to 11 degrees. And so I might give it a shot. I think it's supposed to be a little bit warmer tomorrow. I might try to go outside and try it on tomorrow. But for right now, as soon as I get this little knot tied here, I'm going to put it on my dress form and at least we'll be able to take a look at it. See what it looks like there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Let me tip you up a bit. Okay, so here we are. I like it. I think it's very cute. I'm glad I extended the length. You know, this is very much going to be a comforting type of a top. Moving you down a bit. Um, it's still cold. It's probably about 19, but it feels warm compared to yesterday with the wind. You know, wind today. And my husband's home from work today. It's his day off, so he's out there running the snow plow and everything, so that's good. But about the top, very roomy. The pattern itself had enough ease built into it that, you know, if you pick your normal size, it's going to fit you nice and loosely, in my opinion. It's cozy, it's comfortable, and I think I showed you if I pull up my sleeves, the elastic, it's comfortable enough that I can hold it up there. You know, without cutting off my arm circulation down here, it's pretty low, but it's nice. So there you go. Just a comfortable little top. The hardest part about this was the whole neckline. My advice, if you're going to do it, take it slow. Baste it on by hand first. Whip stitching it by hand. The facing down later, I think, is a whole lot easier than trying to match up all those angles while you're on a machine. But, you know, if you feel like you can handle it, go for it. Go for it. Hope you liked it, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Living my bucolic life, free of me city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and the horses to the bar. And time to move them out again. Their cars get pastures beautiful in our houses. The few I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. As it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.